All right, everybody. Here's the ninth how to play video for Blue Water Navy. And this is going to be the final video involving this specific scenario. I'm going to do one or maybe two more videos to go over a couple things that didn't occur in this game and try to organize some of the thoughts I put out here. But what we're going to do here now is resolve an amphibious landing. So, you will recollect that this scenario is all about the Soviets putting troops ashore. Here is their task force. They are marked with a landing marker. Their amphibious units have four hits so far. And we are going to assume that it is the beginning of the ship's action. So, all task forces with good detection act first in the ship's action, and Soviets act sooner than uh, NATO, they act first. So, first thing that's going to happen in this ship's action is the Soviets are going to attempt to uh, put troops ashore, and this is one of my very favorite parts of the game. I think the way that Stuart did this is just terrific. So I'm going to actually flash over to the rules to show you what's going on in a minute. Um, but uh, you'll notice that the amphibian units have the four hits, like I said. This icon here on the map indicates this is a location that can be invaded. Uh, this is one, two. Um, every port on the map is not something that can be invaded. Uh, some are, some aren't. So I'm going to just go ahead and pull the landing units out here so we can keep a good look at them. And uh, we're going to go over to the rules and we're going to look at what this says. So when you resolve the landing, you need to know what turn in the game it is and what the location of the invasion is. So in this case, we are invading somewhere in Norway. And in this particular scenario, it is turn three. So the defender is going to roll three dice in defense. And we're going to come back here for it, but those dice are going to come out somewhere on this table and indicate what kind of defenses the defender is throwing at the invasion and what the Soviets can do to defeat those defenses. So here we go. Three dice. We've got a one, a four, and an eight. Okay, we'll remember that. One, four, eight. And we're going to look over here. The one is on the one to three, and that is fast attack craft. So what that means is that uh, some of those, you know, close inshore Norwegian speedboats, like in Second Fleet, they used to have the counters for them, right? Those little tiny ships with the penguin missiles, the patrol boats. I love those things. I never got one to actually do any damage to the enemy, but I love those little ships. So things like that are coming out to try to defend the port. And it says cancel by expending three white or red missiles. Red only versus Denmark. So the Soviets have to have three missiles available to shut this down. Uh, for each roll between one and three that's not canceled, you change that to a six. So we're going to go back to the Soviet task force, and we're looking for white missiles only at this point. And uh, here we have the Cresta group has seven, and the Udaloid group has four. Now, the... The black and the yellow missiles have already been launched as anti-ship missiles, but the white missiles were not utilized against the American task force, and that is because those are shorter-range missiles that are reserved for situations like this. So the Soviets easily cancel out that attack. They easily take down those patrol boats, which happened to me every time I tried to use them in Second Fleet. So the, the one die roll is negated. Now we're going to go back and look at four ships. So these are, I think, slightly larger ships coming out to defend the port. And you can ex cancel by expending two black or yellow missiles. For each not canceled, change the die to a six and resolve later. Now this is interesting. I uh, didn't fiddle around and find the markers for this, but I'm going to find them now and show you. Somebody pointed this out to me. Uh, you right-click on the counter and you hit Fire Cruise, right? And um, so, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull the Kirov out here. So the Kirov fired its missiles, if you remember, and the Kinda fired its missiles, and the Minsk, let me get the Minsk here, the Minsk fired its missiles. So those missiles had been expended in an attack against the NATO convoy, so they're not available and the Soviets don't have any more black missiles. So the Soviets are not able to stop these ships 
from sailing out of port to engage the invasion fleet. And so that die roll of four becomes a six. And now we have uh, what we have left for die rolls are a four that became a six and an eight. So we have two six to eights. And those are missile airstrikes canceled by counting a total of four SAMs, which cannot be counted again. And cancel one for free if the task more task force is not marked with a good detection marker. Well, it is marked with a good detection marker. So the Soviets have to come up with eight SAM points to defeat this attack. Let's see if they've got them. Now, the the big ships still have their SAM, so the Minsk is going to give you one. Um, uh, the Kirov, I didn't I didn't correctly go over the limited ammunition thing. I'm going to do it quickly now and come back to it in another video. The Kirov had fired SAMs previously, and they have limited ammunition. So for our purposes here, they have one SAM remaining. So that's one for the Kirov, one for the Minsk, one for the Kinda, so that's three. And over here we have four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have a total of eight SAM points available, and that is going to be just enough to uh, stop these missiles. So uh, the Soviets sent some fast attack craft out to try to stop the invasion, and they got hammered by short-range uh, anti-ship missiles. And um, then they sent some larger coastal defense craft, probably the equivalent of Coast Guard cutters, out to try to meet the invasion. And uh, those got some units into position, and they launched some missiles at the invasion fleet. But the Soviets were just able to knock down all of those missiles. Um, if they had rolled a nine, that would have been mines and the Soviet task force would have had to take a loss on any ship to cancel it. And if they had rolled a 10, it would have been land forts and artillery. Um, if the Sverdlov, which is a specific ship is present, they would have been able to cancel it. If not, they would not have been able to, that's a big battleship that, you know, could have bombarded it. Right. Okay. So I hope you can see the narrative there of what is happening here, right? Like the, the Soviets arrived on station and they started their invasion. Um, Norway had had a little bit of time to get ready, thus, um, or, or Nor Norway had been fighting for a while, and so some of their resources were depleted, thus their defenses were a little bit weaker just from the general war effort, right? And But what they had, they sent out to try to stop this invasion, and in a furious fight close to shore, a bunch of ships and men were probably killed, or probably a bunch of uh, bunch of Soviet hovercraft involved, and you know stuff that got sunk. Maybe the Soviets didn't have hovercraft in the 80s. I don't know. It's probably a bunch of bodies in the water and smoking wreckages of ships. But even so, the bulk of the Soviet invasion force gets through, and we need to go to this next table to see what happens now. Depending on the number of hits that the amphibious units have taken. That tells you how many troops get landed. If one to two hits have been taken, they land two troops. If three to four, uh, also zero hits have been taken, they land two troops. If three to four hits have been taken, they land a single troop. And if more than five have been taken, they land no troops. Um, and uh, so that's what the Soviets have to do, is they have to see how many hits are on their amphibious units, and there are four, and so the Soviets do indeed put troops ashore, and I'm going to show you the troops counter, I, don't think, I, I think I can find it over here, uh, yeah, over here probably, USSR troops, right, so they came and put one troop ashore, and so in this scenario they won, in the campaign game, I'm going to talk a little bit about the campaign game later in a different video. But in the campaign game, uh, the Soviets are landing troops to try to c come down this track and complete the conquest of Norway. And NATO's trying to stop them from landing troops. Or, and NATO can also bring their own troops here to sort of counteract the Soviet troops. So, yeah, it's a cool system. It's a cool system he's got lined up here. The way he simulates the, the ground war and has this game just representing the naval attempt at supporting the ground troops is, you know, I think, very well thought out and done. So that is how a um, that is how the Soviets uh, launch an invasion. 
uh, if NATO is bringing troops in, they do not do an amphibious landing procedure. They just sail their troop ships into port and unload them. And there are some things that happen there in the campaign game that could affect how many troops or how effectively they're able or how quickly they're able to unload those troops to try to push the Soviets back. Um, but anyway, that's that. So uh, we've run through all the things that can happen in this scenario that I can think of, I am going to do one more video where I'm going to demonstrate what happens when you make a bombing run on a land facility. So uh, earlier in the game, we had the Soviets fire missiles at a NATO airfield. But when NATO wants to send an airstrike against a Soviet facility, they have to bomb it. Uh, the, the NATO aircraft do not have uh air-launched uh, anti-facility uh, anti missiles. They, they don't have cruise missiles that they can launch from planes. Uh, they do have some cruise missiles that are launched from ships, which are also pretty cool. So I'm going to uh, do another video and demonstrate a, uh, a NATO attack against uh, the Kola uh, Peninsula up here. Maybe I'll attack Cuba. I don't know. Uh, but I'll show you how that works the best that I can. And I'm also going to... I'm going to review... A couple of things. I'm going to review the capital ship rules because I don't think I did a very good or comprehensive job of talking about capital ships and all that are involved with those units. And um, if I think of it, I'm going to just review the fact that when F-14s are flying cap, when an airstrike comes in, if the F-14s roll to attack the airstrike and miss uh, and and roll a one or a two that they shoot down some of the incoming airstrike missiles. They don't damage the planes, but they do shoot down some of the incoming missiles. Uh, that is important. Uh, so I'm not going to redo that in the video. I'm just telling you that again. Remember that when you play, especially if you're NATO, you don't want to give up a chance. All right. So I think that's all that I've got for this video. Um, and I'll be back with at least one more. Um, and maybe two. I might talk a little bit about what I know of the campaign game so far. My knowledge of that is limited at this time, but I am in the middle of a campaign game by email with somebody, so maybe I'll learn more by then. All right, thanks for watching all these videos, and as always, please let me know if I made any mistakes.